let me show you what really happened with those orange peels. In the late 1990s, in a forgotten corner of Costa Rica, truck after truck dumped tons of fruit waste onto a barren piece of land. To the locals, it was nothing short of an environmental disaster. A landfill disguised as a project. The stench was unbearable, flies swarmed everywhere, and even government agencies stepped in to criticize the mess. It looked like failure carved into the earth. And then, silence. The experiment was abandoned. For 20 years, nobody came back. The land was left to rot, swallowed by time. But when researchers finally returned, expecting only dead soil and decay, they found something no one could have predicted. The wasteland had transformed into a lush, thriving forest. Towering trees covered the horizon. Wildlife had returned. The soil was rich and alive, an entirely new ecosystem born from what was once trash. Those orange peels, once seen as pollution, had become the spark of ecological rebirth. What seemed like waste had triggered one of the most extraordinary regeneration experiments in history. This long-forgotten secret proved something astonishing, nature has a far greater power to heal than we ever imagined, all it needs are the right tools. Sometimes, the most extraordinary stories don't begin with great victories, but with apparent failures. And that's exactly what happened in Costa Rica, a story that began as a fiasco but would later reveal one of the most astonishing ecological transformations of our time. It started in the 1990s, with two forces colliding, on one side, ecologists determined to heal devastated land, on the other, rival juice companies waging legal battles. In 1998, a court ordered an abrupt end to a bold experiment. The message was clear, stop immediately. The orange peels already dumped on the land were abandoned, condemned as pollution. That field, in the heart of a national park, seemed destined to be remembered as a scientific mistake. But to understand why this experiment ever happened, we need to go back to the land itself. The Guanacaste Conservation Area is one of Costa Rica's ecological treasures, home to dry forests, cloud forests, and volcanic landscapes. Today, it's a paradise. But for decades, it was far from it. Vast forests were cut down to create cattle pastures. Fires swept through. The soil, trampled by hooves, grew hard and lifeless. Eventually, even grass, the great survivor, began to vanish. What remained was cracked ground, blistering sun, and silence. How could such land ever be restored? The traditional path was known, plant thousands of seedlings, care for them for decades, invest enormous resources. But how could a developing country afford that across vast conservation areas? In this deadlock, two ecologists from the University of Pennsylvania, Daniel Jansen and Winnie Hallwax, asked a radical question. What if waste could be the cure? Nearby, a juice company called Del Oro faced a growing problem. Every day, trucks delivered fresh oranges to its factory. And with them came mountains of leftovers, peels, pulp, and seeds piling up faster than they could be discarded. For the company, it was waste. For Jansen and Hallwax, it was an opportunity. They proposed something revolutionary, spread the orange waste over exhausted pastures inside the park. The peels would smother invasive grasses, decompose, enrich the soil, and give native seeds. In 1996, an agreement was signed. The following year, the first trucks rolled in. More than 12,000 metric tons of orange waste, the weight of 2,000 elephants, were dumped on three hectares of barren land. On paper, it was brilliant. In reality, the results looked disastrous. The air filled with an overpowering citrus smell. Flies swarmed. Locals complained. And a rival company, Tico Fruit, accused Del Oro of polluting a national park. The lawsuit came fast. By 1998, the court delivered its verdict, the project was over. No more peels. No more experiments. Only a foul-smelling field, abandoned under the Costa Rican sun. Critics claimed it was reckless, even dangerous. The ecologists were devastated. The public moved on. 
And for the next 16 years, that field faded into obscurity, remembered only as a failed idea. But nature does not obey court rulings. In 2013, something unexpected happened. A Princeton graduate student named Timothy Truer stumbled across a forgotten reference to the project in an old paper. The note said the site had never been revisited. That tiny detail sparked his curiosity. Was it still there? And if so, what had become of it? Truer reached out to Jansen and Hallwalks. Together, they set off to find the lost site. But it wasn't easy. The markers were gone. The land had changed. For a while, they weren't even sure they were looking in the right place. And then, at last, they found it. But what they saw didn't look anything like the barren field they expected. It was a forest. Towering trees cast cool shadows. A dense understory spread across the ground. Vines climbed the trunks. Birds darted through the sky while insects hummed in shafts of filtered light. The smell of rot was gone, replaced by the pulse of life. Truer could hardly believe it. He had expected maybe a few greener grasses, perhaps some scattered shrubs. Instead, before him stood a thriving ecosystem, centuries older in appearance than the surrounding control pastures. The team had to double-check, were they even in the right place? A formal study confirmed it. The treated land now had nearly three times more trees, shrubs, and vegetation cover than the control plots. Species diversity had soared, creating habitats for birds, insects, and mammals. The once sterile soil was rich in carbon, nitrogen, and phosphorus, the essential nutrients of life. Even microbial communities were flourishing. And the secret was simple. The thick layer of orange peels had choked out invasive grasses, giving native seeds a chance to grow. The waste decomposed, releasing nutrients. And without human intervention, the forest healed itself. If this revelation has surprised you already, leave a like so that more people can discover this story with you. But there was an important lesson, not every kind of waste can trigger a miracle. Too much citrus could acidify soil. Other residues might poison it forever. And in the beginning, the experiment really had looked like pollution, stinking heaps of rotting fruit in the middle of a park. Was this an example of visionary, low-cost restoration, or just a risky bet that happened to work? Despite the doubts, the impact rippled worldwide. Scientists elsewhere began testing similar ideas. In 2021, a team from the University of Hawaii spread coffee pulp over degraded pastures in the same region. Within just two years, tree cover in treated plots shot up to 80%, compared to only 20% in controls. Invasive grasses were suppressed. Soil nutrients improved. Native saplings shot up over 4 meters tall. Other experiments followed, using sugarcane residues, banana leaves, and different organic materials. And with every result, the same question grew louder. Could waste become one of the most powerful tools to heal our planet? Maybe that's the true lesson of this story. Nature doesn't always need much. Sometimes, all it takes, is a push. The potential is enormous. Every year, millions of tons of agricultural waste are simply discarded around the world. But what if, instead of throwing it away, we used even a fraction of that to restore exhausted lands? The environmental impact could be game-changing, a true reset for entire ecosystems. Scientists, however, remind us to be cautious. Every landscape is unique, shaped by its own climate, soil chemistry, and native species. What worked with orange peels and coffee pulp in Costa Rica might not play out the same way elsewhere. Still, these experiments point toward a future where waste is no longer just thrown aside, but transformed into a silent force of renewal. The orange peel forest is living proof. What once looked like nothing more than discarded leftovers became a thriving refuge for trees, animals, and biodiversity. It's as if nature itself is showing us that rebirth can come from the simplest things, even from what we throw away. And so the question remains, if fruit peels can bring an entire forest back to life, what else are we overlooking?